Mr. Paul of Texas. Gentleman's recognized for five minutes. Hey, thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, in the last several weeks, there have been uh, several articles published uh, by officials from the Federal Reserve System. And this is a little bit unusual because they're critical of anybody who criticizes them and critical of me in particular. Uh, they want to accomplish in these articles uh, this to, uh, they're trying to discredit anybody who disagrees with their, their policies and they're very defensive of this. They have argued the case that they should have total secrecy and in this total secrecy I claim they have tremendous power uh, to do the things that they want to do. And It's only been recent that the American people and this Congress has awakened to this and although uh, we did not get a full audit of the Fed last year, we did get a partial audit of the uh, emergency fund Ending. But still, their argument is, the Fed's argument is that they have to have total independency while the American people believe there should be uh, transparency. The Fed's argument is that they literally are the saviors of the economy, that they came in as an emergency when the markets were crashing and they were able to rescue the entire world economy uh, by, the, by their injection of hundreds of billions if not trillions of dollars. The fallacy of all this is that uh, they may have rescued some banks and they may have rescued some big businesses but they didn't rescue the American people. The consequence of all this has been high unemployment, the people losing their their houses and uh, can't pay their mortgages. So their claim that they prevented a deep depression, they're claiming they prevented a depression for some very wealthy, well-connected people on Wall Street who were making a lot of money anyway in the bubble period of time. And now the people who are suffering the most are the average people who have had to suffer the consequence of uh, the uh, Federal Reserve uh, polish, uh, po uh, policies. This is a policy that punishes the innocent people and actually rewards the, uh, the guilty people and the people who were the beneficiaries. You know, the very people that are claiming that they have solved all our problems are the very ones who created the problems and they never once predicted the trouble that was coming. And there were numerous economists around the country, especially the free market, Austrian economists, predicted and explained the housing bubble and that it was coming and there would be a collapse. But the people at the Federal Reserve who now are claiming that they solved all our problems never once said that we could be in trouble. There was, and when asked, they said, no, there's no housing bubble. Where do you get all this? So now we are supposed to believe everything they tell us. They, they, they created it. They didn't tell us there was trouble coming. And now they've solved all the problems. And we're not supposed to question this. And if we do, then, uh, then we're going to be on the receiving end of severe uh, criticism. You know, the, concluding, the conclusion of many of these articles has been that uh, they want to deflect the, the uh, concentration on the Federal Reserve. They will say that, yes, there still are problems, but it's all on the Congress. It has nothing to do with them. They save us from ourselves, and they take care of us. They create good times and take care of us when we're in bad times. But the, the, but the, whole, th the whole thing is, they claim that our deficits are a problem, and I agree with them on that. The deficits are a problem. But if you think about it, why do the deficits get run out? We, in the member, as members of Congress, this whole Congress for decades on decades, run up deficits to, to pay for welfare programs and warfare. Endless spending. We tax the people, and we can't tax anymore. We borrow, and there's a limit on borrowing. Your interest rates will go up. But guess who, who monetizes the debt and enables the Congress to continue the spending? It's the Federal Reserve. So they are the ones who literally facilitates the deficit financing. So for them to turn around and say it's all the blame of the Congress, they're absolutely being disingenuous. It is the Federal Reserve and the monetary system that encourages runaway deficit runaway spending, runaway militarism, and runaway welfareism. The Fed over the years has had two mandates. One, to have price stability and full employment.
Well, think about the price stability. Yeah, did they have price stability with the NASDAQ stocks back in the year 2000 that collapsed when that bubble uh, developed? Have they had steady, have they had, uh, had steady prices, uh, uh, price stability with uh, medical care costs or housing costs or education costs? No, absolutely none. Today, bond prices are sky high. We have a bond bubble going on right now, and it's the result of Federal Reserve policy, but they don't want you to think and talk about that. And the full employment mandate. I mean, just think of it. The government, our government, uh, uh, the labor and statistics admit there's 9.5 percent unemployment, and then they say, well, if you count more people who are partially unemployed, uh, it's 17 percent. But you know, if you have a free market approach and count everybody who's unemployed, our unemployment rate is 23 percent. That's why the American people are feeling lousy about what's going on, even though Wall Street once again is making money, the banks are making money, they're repaying the bills, but it's all because of a collusion between the Federal Reserve System and the banks and the large corporations while the people are, are still unemployed. The um, Congress has a proper responsibility and it is oversight. It, isn't, it was never meant for the Federal Reserve to have free reign and not have any oversight rights whatsoever. And we have to realize this whole issue of central banking is not a new issue. It was here from the very beginning. Hamilton and Jefferson argued about it, Jefferson and Jackson, and uh, many others were absolutely opposed to central banking. So it's not a new issue, but there is no authority in the Constitution that grants this right to have a central bank and to create money out of thin air just to accommodate the, the uh, po politicians. We have a right and a an obligation responsibility for oversight of the Federal Reserve and our our responsibility is to look at bad policy in a Federal Reserve is responsible for the inflation, the business cycle, the unemployment. It is up to us to do something about it and look into it, at first to look into it and understand it, because then it will be realized that we need to have more oversight. And right now there's tremendous support in the last Congress. We had 320 members of this House who supported an audit of the Fed. So we're making progress here. It annoys the Federal Reserve. There's going to continue to be their PR campaign. It first time in their history they've hired a PR agency and lobbyists to lobby for their position. So they know they are under the gun as far as the people waking up and realizing that the Federal Reserve has been responsible for so much havoc that we've had in this country. And I think it's our responsibility to continue to look at the Fed and find out the, how they have caused so much trouble. I yield back the balance of my time. The gentleman yields back. The gentleman from Illinois, Mr. Lipinski.